What's up, family? What's up, my DGNs, my investors, my crypto influencers? So, um, we're back here once again another week. Um, talk about DripX. Have a few other things that we're gonna discuss and go over. Of course, there has been so much going on within the DripX. Um, I would say community, ecosystem, investors. There's been a lot of speculation a lot of game theory process there's also been a lot of but there's also been a lot of battling between drip x and and the other protocol titan x and just so much going on within the protocol for me i think that we all need each other this is DeFi. we're all in DeFi. we're all investors so i think the way things are and the way money works in a traditional way it also works the same way in kind of DeFi. money has to circulate it has to continue the circulation that's the way it works and we're going to watch a little short video on that and also i want to share something with you um for my investors and why is this it's so important not to be a digian and just to be a call up and just one protocol I'm going to show you something and we're going to talk about it, but let me read it really quick. So it says divide your portion among seven or even eight. Well, you do not know what disaster may befall the land. So what this means, and this from Ecclesiastics 11.2, what this means is pretty much ties in investing or ties in planning of course we're looking at this in planning seeds and all that but this ties in investing so you always have to diversify you diversify your portfolio very well because you don't know what could happen you don't know and most investments run in seasons and cycles so you diversify well to receive the best reward and there's times i know in crypto ben been been in crypto there's some things that run in certain seasons like right now you have bitcoin ripping alts haven't really moved as much as hard as they normally will but the time and the season will come you have eth this is lagging also but it's always it always goes from bitcoin then it goes to your blue chips and then it goes to more of your high risk investments or your smaller altcoins and that's how it normally works but your bitcoin is going to give you less return and then your blue chips is going to give you a little less returns but your altcoins are going to give you the highest returns but normally the money funnels from bitcoin down to the blue chips down to altcoins but i think it's important to have positions in all three categories to get the highest gains when we're speaking in the DeFi concept. But this applies to any anything that you may be involved in too. Um, but let's go over something really quick. This is a video. This is by um, an old show that I watched back in the days as a kid, didn't know the value of this and what this brought, um, but we're going to show a clip of it and hopefully this brings some kind of um, value to you. Let's play it really quick. And that's how I became rich, making the little slices grow. Money shouldn't be idle and must be put to work, you know. Oh, yeah? How about all that idle dough you got stashed away? Oh, no, lads. This is just petty cash. Moves in and out each day. If I sat on my money, I might just as well be stranded on a desert island for all the good to do me. I couldn't eat it, couldn't wear it, couldn't use it. Oh, I can't bear it. Money should never stagnate, but like ocean currents, circulate. 
like the ocean currents control the world's weather, you see, circulating money controls the economy. Money must keep moving to fulfill its obligation. And, and that's how I became... Hopefully you are able to hear that and understand what he's saying. Money has to circulate. It has to continue a revolving circle. It has to circulate. And that's kind of what we do in DeFi. You know, we're circulating um, as DeFi. You know, they consider us DeFi degens, um, DeFi investors. Money is continue. It continues in a steady cycle, and it continues to circulate, and all that good stuff. So, um, let me frame my screen back up and try to do that. But money, it, like. I want to say money. This is DeFi. So our investments has to continue to circulate and circulate in these cycles. Um, but that brings me to DripX. So DripX and TitanX, you know, people that got into TitanX, even back in the Zen lunch days, Zen, in the ways, they, these dApps are a pretty much a cycle of other dApps that have came about and made them better. Um, now, Zen kind of started this. Well, I didn't say I want to say they started it, but in a way it is a mix of Zen and other protocols that have made this or even Titan X what it is. Titan X was the first of what we consider a drip X. And then we can say we can say Zen was the first of what we would consider a Titan X. But Titan X revolved uh, made Zen a better aspect of zen but even before zen you had hex which hex um zen is kind of influenced kind of by hex too so they all are influenced by each other and they're meant to make everything better and that's kind of where it is um but when we talk about drip x drip x is meant to make what titan x is better by adding some new features or better features to bring more sustainability to the protocol now come up on that unlock on we would say it's a day to, yeah, day eight stake but it unlocks on day nine come on that day ninth and when this a lot unlock happens um, we will see what happens with the protocol overall now there were some talks in the chat about staking and burning your stakes and all that good stuff and more information on that later but supposedly what's been talked about is if you have a miner and you complete half of your miner so say an eight day miner and you get to day four on your miner you can burn your miner and it automatically stakes and it gives you the full allocation of your eight day payout now are they gonna take away the the um the adopter ranking or any of that? I'm not sure. Right now, there's there that's not gonna happen based on the talks now. But there's a possibility, maybe maybe that could happen. I'm not sure it's gonna happen or not. But what's gonna happen? You will have to pay a fee, which would be probably point right now um, based on the voting. It's looking like it may be 0.1 BNB. So you have to pay that 0.1 BNB, which is how much is 0.1 BNB right now? Um, let's see. Roughly about 40 bucks. So you have to pay that 0.1 B is roughly about 40 bucks to be able to end in that mine early to get the other 50% to stake it. Now that point one BNB is gonna also be used for buying burns. So even, you know, it's 40 bucks, mm, it may not look like a lot, but if a lot of people do it, it's gonna add up. Now the talk also was about the dilution and how people could be diluted from the staking, because if a lot of people do that, 
especially the ones that's been in the in the the payout for the BNB payout for the stake. They could be diluted if a lot of people were to do that. I don't know how this is gonna play out. No one really 100% knows. Time will tell. Um, but it does add more game theory. It does also allow for ones that do wanna go into the staking to go directly in there and it kind of gets rid of people claiming and selling because once they go into that stake, that stake is locked and they only earn BNB. They're not selling the drip X on the market, which more drip X is locked up and burned in a way. And it just comes out to be a win-win situation and in the short, mid and long term, depending on how many people actually does this. Again, we don't know who's going to do this and how that's going to play out and who and how many people are going to do it. Um, we have the buy and burn, which is been stacking pretty, pretty good. Um, it's over three million right now. So buy and burn pool is stacked up nicely, which is good. Um, I did see they added a timer here. So I'm guessing once this time expires, um, that allow people to do that buy and burn. Um, that's what I'm guessing that's for right there. So that's new. They added. They also added this calculator, which allows you, based on the current scenario, you can play with it, you know, if you were to stake. So, like, for instance, I have around 10 million. Yeah. I have around, around 10 million that's ending. I'm coming up on day eight if I was to stake them. At the current value right now, this is what I'm looking at. Now, again, this is this can be all different. It just all depends. So this can all change, depends on who all stakes. Again, also you have that early staking reward that there people are gonna be able to do with their miners. So that's gonna add something different to this calculator. Um, also, the price of the token could be different, which would also make this different too, depending on what happens after the day eight unlock. So there's a lot of things that play into this. So I don't take this as what it is, because this can be a lot different come after the eight day unlock. Would it be would this be nice on day eight with a mine a miner that only paid what 50 something bucks for it. Yes, that would be awesome to be able to receive that every every eight days and receive this every 28 days and every 90 days. That would be awesome to be able to receive that. But I don't think that's gonna be that. I just don't think it will. So um but it could it all it, it is what it is. No one knows what's gonna happen. That's why everybody's waiting to see what happens. They also added the kitchen, the drip X to the kitchen sink, which if you've been in DeFi, you know what the kitchen sink is about. You stake your drip X. This is more of like when we look at the two stakes, when we look at, let me come back over here. When you look at the stakes for this and to earn a BNB, you're fighting for a position of the pool. So you're, in the way you're trying to get the best position, which how you get the best position by by staking the most drip X to get the best position to get these BNB payouts. So you're gonna have to continue to stake to keep your position at whatever level you want it. Now, the good thing about kitchen sink is it's a lot different because now with the kitchen sink you can stake your drip x and really you just yourself of course you have to keep eye on the contract balance that's important to, to know not saying that this will this contract balance will drain out but again it's d5 of course it will take a lot longer so you have you have more of a let's say you have more of a chance to receive returns out of this uh, but then also you're fighting against 
the value of Rip X. So it's a lot of a lot of other things that play. And this is a whole nother game theory when you're talking about coming in the kitchen saying, Is it valuable to the kitchen saying? Yes, I believe it is. Um but yeah, you have to do your research on that. Again, none of this stuff is never financial advice. I'm just kind of sharing things that I see, that I know, and that I look at as importance to me. Now, on. So DripX price did hit a top, I would say, it did come down and test, which test the tested, it held, bounced up, got rejected. You can say this was kind of a rejection. Came back down, um, and then we broke out of this downtrend. So it's back in the uptrend. Uh, this is the support I would be paying attention to, and you can go to the hourly, and you can see that support. So I'm drawing that from the hourly. Let's look at the four hour. Four hour support is still pretty much the same in a way, but we are back in the uptrend now. People are speculating one cent drip X. Will that happen? Time will tell. I don't know. Long term, possible, short term, I don't know because again, we're going to be fighting with inflation and all these tokens coming on the market. So we don't know what's going to happen when it comes to that aspect of drip X itself. Drip. I think drip position uh, might be a good time to you know. Uh, I don't know. It's hard to say because it did drop right here. It looked like it wanted to stabilize, but then it came down even more. But now it's kind of trying to find another floor right here. So I don't know what's going to happen with this. It's, I would just say just pay attention to it and watch it. I don't foresee it coming too too much lower um the selling has slowed down a lot so we may be stabilizing and then also for wrap drip i think wrap drip is a, a better play when we're talking about the stabilizing of the price it's been in this range since the sell-off uh so this might be a better play overall for the time being but that's kind of what we have with wrap drip now i want to go on and i want to talk well let's talk about this first uh let's go here let's talk about stack stack is another one that i'm i'm super hyped about that i'm watching i think it has much potential it's one of the ones that's going under the radar that people are not really talking about but this thing could possibly explode in the short to long term and we can see the price increasing of course there's not a lot of volume because again this thing is going under the radar no one is talking about it but at the point to people catch on to what's happening over here this thing could skyrocket so i just wanted to bring it to you guys um, be mindful if you come in this is consider i would say a long time uh long-term investment but they do have a lot of stuff that's going to be coming that's going to be going on i would say just establish your you know establish a little position you don't have to really you know not financial advice but get your little position and just just ride the wave i would say so i just wanted to bring that to you now on to this Coming on here looking at these blockchains and this is important because when you talk about the after bitcoin run when you talk about the flow of money this is where the money is going to go at first um in these these native blockchain tokens now looking at the top 10 is important but i wouldn't sleep on these other ones neither especially stack i think a lot of people sleeping on stack but stack is Supposed to be a, a layer built on top of Bitcoin, so that's one to watch. I have some of that, and I have had some of that for a long time. It's holding my position. Post chain also, I think Post chain has a lot of potential coming up this bull market. 
Binance specifically also, Binance has a lot of potential. Binance has a lot of potential coming in this bull market. It's probably what it is. You can see the TVL is at four billion. You know, of course, ETH is the is the OG, but Binance is is in that top spot too. Tron also, Tron has been doing very well. Tron is an OG also and has been doing good, but Binance is a big, big, a really big sleeper. So I would keep an eye on Binance. Binance could do some some mega numbers. And then you have all these others, but Pulse Chain is another one that I would consider a sleeper too. That once it wakes up, it's, it's going to do very, very, very well. And I think and we can go to it really quick. Let's see the mountain. Uh, uh, uh. Mm, okay, there he is. Loading up. Looking at 518 million in total value lock. And you can see right here, we had that explosion early at lunch. And then. It's exploding again. So we're we, like we came, yeah, we went we surpassed all time high. And I think we're gonna go up even higher, in my opinion. That's just what I see. I think in my opinion we could go higher. But there's a lot going on on post chain. And I wanna talk about two to two other tokens besides post and post X that that I'm liking and I'm liking them because first of all, well, one of them I would say you're very early in and the other one has great potential that a lot of the supply is burnt. And we can go look at some of the supply. So the first one, hold on, let me pull these up real quick. And then I'll hopefully it allows it to pull up uh, yeah we should be good so first one is ebtc and this is still fairly new it's not old i think the potential is great low liquidity market cap is very 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 low so being this is i would say this is very 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 early and majority of supply is already minted so this has a max supply this is a community driven project so the supply is spread pretty well and for me i'm just accumulating i'm accumulating as much as i can because if this this is another one if it catches on it's going to take off so supply um, there's over 20,000 holders and the supply is, is not maxed out yet, but there's only probably about seven, eight Bitcoin coming on the market or EBTC coming on the market daily. Not a whole lot of supply has slowed and we can see right here, we do have some Considered whales in, in 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 this protocol, and it's because they've been accumulating. But for the most part, the supply is distributed pretty pretty decent. Um, of course, I would like to see the supply a lot old, a lot lower than in these, and and distributed out a lot more in these top wallets. Um, but for the most part the liquidity is low so even these ones that do hold a lot of the supply they cannot well they can dump them they can dump them but they're going to be losing a lot of value so the best thing for them to do is hold right now so that's that's important because they can't dump them all on the market there's not enough supply for for them to well there's not enough liquidity for them to dump these tokens 
all of them without hurting them their own self. So, so keep that in mind. Low liquidity is always good for newer projects. And it also allows for price to, oh, I didn't even show it, I'm sorry. So this is what I was talking about. I apologize. So this is the, the supply. These are the holders. So there's quite a bit of holders. Uh, and this is what I was talking about, the percentages right here. So that's what I was talking about with that. But anyways, back to this. So good thing about low liquidity, it doesn't take a lot to move the price. So small buys can move the price pretty fast. So coming in here with a couple, like a dollar or two or the $5 or $10 can a whole bunch of little small buys can really pump the price because the liquidity is not a lot of liquidity. So that's important to know that. All right, let's keep moving. Um, another one I'm excited about is more, more. The good thing about more is majority of the supply is burnt. So again, as this says right here, 90% of the supply is burnt. So this is also, this is Trayvon James. This is something that he created and it's been doing pretty well. Um, I am in this also. So when we come here to the explore, of course, 2000 holders, 21 million more. But when you look at the more tokens right here, the majority of all the supplies down. So there's not a lot of supply on the market. That this is the biggest holder, and that I would say that might be Trayvon. Of course, this is a pro his project, so he, I'm pretty sure he will be the biggest holder. But when you come down here, this is what you like to see: the supply is is distributed pretty pretty well. It's it's better than EBTC, so this would be a great investment. So the, I think this thing can really do some numbers the way the supply is and it's only one million market cap so you take one million uh this thing could do some numbers you know do some numbers with the supply of what it is remember 90 percent of supplies burn so so we could get some nice price appreciation on more so just keep that in mind also didn't talk about this but this is kind of when um, um, the EVM Bitcoin launched, uh, the EBTC that I talked about a few minutes ago. I had this in here and I didn't talk about it. But so they had this mining tool, and this, of course, is on post chain, and you were able to come mine this. You can either do it through this DAP or you could uh, did it by creating a miner to do it through your computer so that was there was a couple ways of doing this and they did limit it to when it launched you'll be able to mine 50 um ebtc and a max of 25 per wallet and but this slowly slowly went down well that went down pretty fast i would say they zero well zero the zero down to i would say the fifth having went pretty quick now when it got down to the six it started it's been moving a lot slower now because there's not a lot of supply to be mined so but yeah so that is for that so all in all all in all diversify your portfolio well diversify well not and when I mean diversify well, if you don't have much to invest, don't spread yourself too thin, too thin. I would say pick your top five and do it that way. Top five investments and you invest in the top five. Not as your portfolio grows, as you get become more um, liquid in funds you have to be able to invest in more stuff 
to get more returns by spreading yourself out a little further than you do that. Do not, and that's one thing I did was I spread myself too thin when I first got into here. I had hundred dollars and I just bought five dollars here, five dollars there, five dollars there. Which, when it comes down to it, like if something does, uh, say some, say one coin does a hundred x. You're not gonna really get a whole lot of return out of that, so don't like I say, don't spread yourself too thin. You know, pick five. I that's what I said. I suggest just five, and then and then also when you're spread spread too far out, remember you're it's, it's a lot more to keep up with. You know, and D five D five moves fast, and and D five, um, like Drip X for instance, Drip X lunch. And Drip X is already coming out with new stuff, you know, and then and that happens with every protocol. You know, I'm not trying to name them all, but it happens with every protocol. So don't spread yourself too thin. Pick your top five, stick your top five. You want to have Drip if you want to have Drip X as your main or one of your main or one of your top fives, then let that be one of your top fives. But then also look at other things to be invested in but again thank you for watching hopefully we got some value out of what i shared and what i talked about catch me next week as we do another stream or another video i want to say this stream this is not live stream not live stream but i do look to do some live streams eventually uh and just come and just talk and just share and just talk to the community as we get back in the groove of doing these videos about DeFi and investing and all the great things that we like to do in the world of cryptocurrency and DeFi. This is your boy, or uh, not your boy, your man. This is your man, Donatello. No boy stuff, this man stuff over here. But it's your man, Donatello, the DeFi gen investor smart investor wise investor catch you next week with another video peace out